Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd like to start with you, Assistant Secretary Nichols. Good day. Um, I've got two issues to talk with you about. The first one is a constituent of mine named Matthew Heath. I'm sure you're aware of the situation there. Matthew's been wrongfully detained by the Maduro regime in Venezuela. Uh, in early 2020, Matthew was arrested in Venezuela's borderlands near Colombia under very questionable circumstances and on highly specious charges. Since then, the Maduro regime has held Matthew hostage, imprisoning him in horrible conditions, and reportedly subjecting him to unspeakable acts of torture. In fact, last week marked two years of Matthew Heath's wrongful detention in Venezuela. That's two years too long for Matthew, it's two years too long for his family, and certainly it's two years too long for me. So Assistant Secretary Nichols, the Maduro regime should immediately and unconditionally release my fellow Tennessee and Matthew Heath. And I'd like to know uh, from you what is currently being done to bring Matthew back to his family in Tennessee. What's the plan? Thank you, Senator. Uh, I share your views entirely. Uh, Special Envoy for Hostage Affairs, uh, Roger Carstens has, uh, as well as our ambassador, uh, have raised this issue on multiple occasions with the Maduro regime. Uh, we've sought to do uh, all that we can uh, to secure his immediate and unconditional release. Uh, and in the meantime, we have insisted that the regime uh, should ensure uh, his safety and his health by improving the conditions of his confinement. Uh, we will continue to work uh, tirelessly to secure the release of all wrongfully detained Americans in Venezuela. I, I appreciate that. You know how concerned I am about this situation. I appreciate your continued attention and focus on the issue. Uh, it is tragic, and it's uh, certainly something that Tennesseans all have their eye on. The next topic is, is another one that you and I are, uh, very, have, have discussed before and are very familiar with, and that's the Maduro regime's growing cooperation with communist China. Uh, in 2014, China and the Maduro regime upgraded their diplomatic relations to the highest levels, signing a comprehensive strategic partnership. The Maduro regime is the region's, region's biggest borrower from China. They've accepted an estimated $62 billion in loans over the last decade and a half. More generally, as Communist China has become Latin America's overall top trading partner, China's used the Belt and Road Initiative and other instruments to provide foreign direct investment and lending for energy and other critical infrastructure in Venezuela and also other parts of Latin America. For example, China has aggressively invested in Latin America's space sector, such as the Manuel Rios Bernari Terrestrial Satellite Control Base in Venezuela. The Maduro regime and China have also significantly increased their military cooperation. Between 2009 and 2019, Beijing reportedly sold more than $615 million worth of weapons to Venezuela, making the Maduro regime a top purchaser of China's military equipment in that region. China strongly supports the Maduro regime's digital authoritarianism in Venezuela. ZTE, a CCP-directed Chinese telecoms and technology company, directly helped the Maduro regime construct the databases and identity card program for the country's fatherland card system that rolled out in January of 2017. The Maduro regime has used the fatherland card system to increase social control, to increase their coercion, and their vote buying. So Assistant Secretary Nichols, what's the Biden administration doing to counter the Maduro regime's efforts there in Venezuela, to counter China's growing interference and malign influence in Latin America more broadly? We continue to talk uh, with our uh, friends and partners throughout the hemisphere uh, about the real, the real uh, relations with the People's Republic of China uh, and the Chinese Communist Party. We focus our efforts on what's the real cost of lending, what is the quality of the projects that uh, PRC companies are building, and I've seen with my own eyes, I think you have yep. as well, um, collapsing stadiums, mm -hmm. faulty foreign ministries, uh, bad roads that have been built by Chinese companies in this hemisphere. We've seen the debt trap that countries in our hemisphere have fallen into, and the depth of the relationship between the PRC uh, and uh, Venezuela uh, demonstrates, I think, uh, to the democratic countries in our hemisphere um, wh exactly what kind of a partner uh, the PRC is in engaging with one of the worst countries uh, in terms of respect for human rights, rule of law, and everything else we value mm -hmm. uh, in, our, uh, in our region. Um, 
Before time runs out, Senator, I just want to note that I was in Mexico. I followed up on the issue we discussed before. Yep. I can brief you online. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Senator Murphy. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you to both of our witnesses for being here today. Um, I was in both Mexico and Colombia 